there. Is Maxwell House really the only coffee in the world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House. The coffee that's always good to the last drop. It was Oscar Wilde who said, Children begin by loving their parents. As they grow older, they judge them. Sometimes they forgive them. There, in a very small nutshell, is the very foundation of what has become probably the least important of all American celebrations, Father's Day. Now, you may think that Father's Day is merely a time for the presentation of neckties that father won't wear, socks that father can't use, or books that father hasn't time to read. But in Springfield, in the white frame house on Maple Street, the Andersons have an entirely different conception of the day, like this. Jumping creepers, why does it have to be on Sunday? Betty, I think that's a very selfish attitude. After all your father has done for you. But I'm going to buy him a necktie. Why can't we just polish the car or something? I don't mind spending Father's Day with Daddy. You keep out of this. Betty? Well, she doesn't have anything else to do anyway. I do, too. I can do lots of things. Mother, I have a date with Dick Andrews, and I'll have to break it. Why can't we just polish the car or something? <laughs> I can go over to Patty's and play, or I can look at Jimmy Woody's television. Kathy, we're going to devote the entire day to your father. I know, but Betty said I didn't have any place else to go, and I do. Because I can go over to Patty's and play, or I can... Mother, everybody else buys their father a necktie or socks. Why do we have to be different? Because your father is one of the sweetest men in the entire world. And I certainly think... Well, sure, but why do I have to break a date just for that? No matter what we buy for your father, we'll have to buy with his money. I'll pay for it out of my allowance. Which you get from your father. Mother, you just don't understand. Why can't we just polish the car or something? <laughs> Bud, the car is less than a week old, and your father has already polished it four times. Well, this time we can do it. Janie Liggett's buying her father a necktie, and she doesn't have to break her date for Sunday. Betty, we'll not discuss it any further. Call Dick and tell him you're sorry. Do I have to? Yes, you have to. Kathy? <laughs> Why can't we clean up the garage or something? <laughs> <laughs> Betty, go in and call Dick. Oh, poo. Just because it's Father's Day, I have to ruin my whole life. Cleaning the garage would be a good Father's Day present. Bud. Yes, Mom? You can forget about your silly butterflies for one Sunday. But I promised Joe Phillips... I thought you'd broken your date with Joe. I did, but if we clean the garage the first thing in the morning... We're going to spend the day with your father. We're going to wait on him hand and foot, cater to his every wish. Sunday's going to be his day, and that's final. So let's not talk about it anymore. Now you can't even talk. For that, Bud Anderson, you dry the dishes. But I didn't say anything, Mom. All I said was, you can't even talk. It was the way you said it. But, Mom, I didn't mean anything. All I said... Daddy's coming. All right, suppose we explain the whole thing to your father. I'll dry the dishes. And remember, not a word about Sunday. We want it to be a surprise, don't we? Yeah, some surprise. Bud. Oh, sure, Mom, we sure do. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> Mother, if Dick Andrews never calls me again, it'll be your fault. He borrowed a car for Sunday and everything. Well, let's not worry about it, Betty. You'll get another girl. Mother, how can you say that? <laughs> how can she say what? Daddy! Hi, Dad. Well, how's the world's finest family tonight? Hi, Father. Hi. Hello, honey. Hi, dear. What's the matter with Camille? 
Oh, nothing much, really. You're a little late, aren't you, dear? What's in the package, Daddy? Ice cream. Put it in the ice box like a good girl. Oh, boy! Want me to put your hat away, Dad? Uh, thank you very much. It'll be a pleasure. What's the matter with him? <laughs> oh, we had a slight misunderstanding. Nothing serious. Were you held up at the office? No, I stopped off at Haney's garage on my way home. Oh? There's a very annoying rattle in the rear bumper. I'm not even sure we ought to keep that car. Jumping catfish. I beg your pardon? That old wreck of ours made so much noise you couldn't hear yourself think. But if this one makes one little squeak... Betty, as long as we had to buy a new car, we might as well have them put it in good shape. Why don't you set the table like a good girl, Betty? How else can you set the table? <laughs> and you help her, Kathy. Yes, Mommy. You know, Margaret, speaking of Sunday... Who said anything about Sunday? Didn't I? No. Oh. Well, I met Hector Smith downtown today. How is he? He's fine. You know, he has a client over in Plainfield... I haven't Field. seen Elizabeth in ages. I'll have to call her after dinner. Yes. Heck has a client over in Plainfield... Maybe I'd better wait until tomorrow. But I've such a lot to talk about. Margaret, will you please let me tell you about Hector? Why, of course, dear. Go right ahead. All right. Try to tell a woman anything. It's just like... Uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> Plainfield, dear. Oh. Well... You see, I was listening. <laughs> Yes. Even if you weren't. Margaret. <laughs> Hector was coming back from Plainfield the other day, and he decided to take a shortcut. Well, you know how Hector is. <laughs> he got lost. Oh, that's too bad. Is he all right now? Nothing happened to him. He just got lost. <laughs> Found himself on an old dirt road way back in the hills. My. Margaret, you don't have to keep making those little noises. I know you're listening. <laughs> Go ahead, dear. Well, he found a lake, just a little bit of a thing. He says it's the greatest spot for fish he's ever seen in his life. They were actually leaping out of the water. Bass, lake trout, everything. And every one of them dying to get on a hook. Margaret, doesn't that mean anything to you? Oh, yes, dear, I'm quite excited. <laughs> well, anyway, we're going to run up there Sunday morning and see what we can do. Sunday morning? Jim, you can't. Why not? It's only about 20 miles. Heck's going to pick me up at five, and all I'll need is a few sandwiches. Jim Anderson, I've never seen it to fail. Every time we try to surprise you with anything, you have to make other arrangements. My birthday's in February. <laughs> Sunday is Father's Day. Oh, that thing. Betty and Bud broke their dates just so they could spend the day with you. They didn't have to do that. But they did. We had the nicest day arranged for you. We were all going out for dinner... They were going to a picture show, one I know you'd want to see. Honey, doesn't it make any difference that I'd rather go fishing? I don't care about Father's Day. Well, we do. We want to show you how much we love you. And we want you to have a good time. I know what you mean, Angel, but if I'd rather go fishing... Jim, you're being very selfish about this whole thing. <laughs> because I want to go fishing. What's selfish about going fishing? I'll answer it. When a whole family decides to give up its pleasure for an entire Sunday, the very least you can do... Is give up mine. Is that what you mean? No, I have another idea. How would it be if we went with you? Margaret, you wouldn't like it up there, believe me. It's not the place for women and children. It's a wild little lake in the middle of nothing. Well, come on in, Heck. We're in the kitchen. If Elizabeth and Billy wanted to go, I'll bet Hector would take them. I bet he wouldn't. Nobody would. When you go fishing, you fish. No place for a family. Am I busting in on anything? No, of course not, Hector. Come in. Hiya, Margaret. Gosh, I haven't seen you in a dog's age. Heck, will you explain to Margaret that families don't go on fishing trips? Why don't they? <laughs> what? There, you see? Uh, Heck, come on outside. I uh, want to show you the new car. You showed it to me this afternoon. Well, I want to show it to you again. What for? Come on, Heck. Oh, you want to... I'll see you later, Margaret. Don't you dare let him change your mind, Hector. I'll be right out here if you want me, honey. All right, dear. What the heck's the matter with you, Heck? Nothing. Why? You know what happens if you take a bunch of women and kids on a fishing trip. 
You catch nothing. Yeah, I know, but look, Jim. Any self-respecting fish wouldn't come within 10 miles of us. Especially if you got a peek at Kathy. Jim, I'm not arguing with you. You're absolutely right, but... Then why did you make a crack like that in front of Margaret? Well, to tell you the truth, Jim, if I can't take Elizabeth and Billy, I can't go. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, they had something all arranged for Sunday. It's Father's Day. Billy broke a date. They're doing it all for me. Oh, I don't know. Heck, is that lake as good as you said it was? Oh, it's terrific, Jim. I've never seen fish like that. I'm telling you, in five minutes, I saw 20 of them jump out of the water. Gee, I hate to give it up. Oh, well, let's go. With Elizabeth and Billy and Margaret and... Jim, it won't make any difference. These fish are so big, nothing will scare them. <laughs> Not even Kathy? <laughs> Not even Kathy. Well... Okay, we'll try it. We uh, better take both cars, huh? We'll have to. Leave around five? Okay. Yeah, well, I gotta go home now. Tell Margaret I said goodbye, will you? You bet. Oh, heck. Yeah? Happy Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it's not the first time a man and his family didn't quite see eye to eye on the best way to spend a happy Father's Day. Here's a point, however, everybody agrees on. When it comes to a cup of coffee, you and I and the family next door all look for one thing, flavor. We want the most in flavor for every penny we spend. An extra flavor is just what you do get in our Maxwell House coffee. That wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor no other coffee has to offer. No coffee but Maxwell House. And there's a good reason why. It's our recipe. The only recipe on this green earth for that good-to-the-last-drop flavor. It calls for certain fine varieties of coffee to be blended together just so. It's the one way, the one recipe for that famous Maxwell House flavor. That wonderfully good flavor that's made our coffee America's favorite brand. That's why you find so much more enjoyment when your cup is filled with Maxwell House coffee. So next time you bring home a pound of coffee, make it that familiar blue tin of our Maxwell House. For more flavor, for your money's worth and more, start enjoying coffee that's always good to the last drop. <laughs> The sun comes up like a stab of light. Rose fingers reach into the night. The darkness fades, the night is gone. And day comes fast with a rising dawn. A woodcock calls, a soft wind sighs. And from its nest a starling flies. This is the dawn, the break of day, the time when Young light... Young man, will you please shut up? <laughs> well, pardon me. <laughs> Most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Getting up in the middle of the night to chase after a bunch of stupid fish. But Elizabeth... We had a nice day planned for you. One we'd all have enjoyed. But no, you have to drag us up here so we can freeze to death. Are you cold, Elizabeth? Of course not. My teeth always chatter like this. <laughs> Billy, get the blanket out of the car for your mother. Hmm? <laughs> I said, get the blanket out of the car. Uh, no, thanks. I'm quite comfortable. <laughs> Billy! Leave the boy alone, Hector. The poor child. If he had a father with the slightest bit of consideration... Elizabeth, I didn't say you had to come along. This was your idea. Naturally. You haven't had an idea since the day I met you. <laughs> now, look, Elizabeth. When I think of the men I could have married and didn't, Lucky dog. Hector! I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I, I was thinking of, of... I think the Andersons are coming. Well, it's about time. You'd think they'd have hurried a little. Well, the road's kind of rough, Elizabeth, and Jim has a new car. Oh, Hector, stop making excuses for them. They're just like everyone else we know. Don't consider a soul but themselves. 
especially that Margaret, thinks her children are the most wonderful things that ever lived. And if you ask me, Margaret, darling. <laughs> Elizabeth, we're awfully sorry. Hi, heck. We thought you were lost. I'm awfully sorry we're so late, Elizabeth. Oh, Angel, we hadn't even noticed it. <laughs> we had to stop on account of Kathy. Her hat blew out of the car, and we had an awful time finding it. Hi, Billy. Billy, wake up, dear. Betty is here. She is? Oh, hi, Betty. Hi. Hey, this is quite a spot, Heck. Yes, sir. It's all right. Jim, I saw a bass, so help me, it was that long. You're kidding. No, I'm not, Jim. Well, maybe that long. Hey, there, there, there. Did you see that one, Jim? Hmm? What did I tell you, huh? Where? Right right there, near the dock. I don't see anything. Jim, you weren't looking in the right place. Well, what's the difference? The place I want to see him is on the end of my line. Got all your stuff, Heck? You ain't just a woofing. The greatest assortment of fish persuaders in the world. And it's all on the dock waiting for Papa. Hector, where are you going? Fishing? Why? You'll do no such thing. <laughs> There's a little thing like breakfast that comes first. Breakfast? Oh, honey, we, we haven't... haven't any time for breakfast, Elizabeth. It's practically 6.30. Jim, Elizabeth's right. My lands have got all that food to take out of the car. I'll get it, Elizabeth. I'll get it myself. You just build a fire. Honey, if we build you a nice big fire, then is it all right if we go fishing? After you've had your breakfast. Wait a minute. How about the kids? Why can't they build a fire? And hey, where'd they go, anyway? Kathy? You want me, Daddy? Where's Bud? He's under a bush. What? <laughs> Jim, do you have to shout so loud? How else can I shout? <laughs> Kathy, what's he doing under a bush? He's sleeping. Well, wake him up. Why? Because it's time for breakfast. Breakfast? You want me for breakfast, Dad? I figured that would get him. <laughs> hey, what happened to Billy? Betty? Yes, Father? Where's Billy? You want me, Mr. Anderson? What are you doing over there? Just watching the lake. Well, let Betty watch it for a while. Alone? There's nothing to worry about. Nobody ever steals a lake until after breakfast. Hiya, Dad. What's cooking? Nothing yet. Get some wood. You said it was time for breakfast. Bud, we've got to build a fire. Get some wood. Where? You know, Heck, at this point, our ancestors are probably spinning in their graves. <laughs> Where? Well, gosh, what do I know about getting wood? Jim, you're only confusing the boy. Bud, you see that tree? You see all those trees? That's wood. <laughs> What am I supposed to do? Bite him down? Bud. <laughs> oh, holy cow, Mom. Bud, go into the woods, pick up dead branches, twigs, anything that'll burn, and bring them back here. There's nothing complicated about that, is there? I guess not. And stop scratching. But I itch. <laughs> I said stop scratching and get going. I told them we ought to polish the car. Now I gotta make like a beaver. <laughs> Go someplace, Mr. Anderson? Well. <laughs> Leads with his chin every time, doesn't he? <laughs> Billy, we have a slight problem. Oh? We are faced with the task of providing heat without fuel. Well, you don't say. You know, we had the same thing once in a physics exam, and it's a cinch. Friction. That's how you do it. Now, you take two bodies... Billy, shut up and get some wood. <laughs> what? I said, get some wood. Oh, okay. But I thought Mr. Anderson said... Wood! Hector, stop raising your voice. Wood. <laughs> Nobody has to get excited about it. I'll get all the wood you want. Jim. Margaret, as soon as the boys get back with the wood... Are those your things Kathy's playing with? Where? On the edge of the dock. Holy smoke, my tackle! Of all the rattled brains... Jim, don't frighten her. Kathy! <laughs> oh, 
Jim. Father! Kathy, grab the dock. We'll be right there. Uh, Take it easy, Kathy. What's going on? Uh, do something. We're coming, Kathy. We'll have you out in two seconds. Daddy! Daddy! Now, Kathy, Daddy. Kathy, Kathy, give me your hand. Come on, honey. Hold your hand on. That, that's a good girl. You got her, Jim? X, my girl. <sighs> Now, now, we're all right. Oh, Kathy. <laughs> Daddy, I fell in. <laughs> I know, honey, but you're all right now. You're all right. Hector, get the blanket out of the car. The poor child's ringing wet. I'll get it, Mrs. Smith. Oh, go ahead, bud. Hurry. Okay. Is she okay, Mother? Yes, dear, she's fine. Daddy scared me, and that's why I fell in. <laughs> Jim! Jim, look at my stuff! It's gone! Jumping, Jehoshaphat! I was trying to catch a fish and you scared me! <laughs> it's all right, baby. Margaret, take that child up to the car immediately. She's got to get out of those wet clothes. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. I, I can't even think straight. Of course, her father is much more concerned about that smelly old fishing tackle. <laughs> Men. I don't know why they ever invented them anyway. <laughs> Gosh, I'm awfully sorry, Heck. Hmm. My whole kit. It's down at the bottom of the lake. Look at it. You mean you can see it? Where? Ah, down there. Must be 30 feet. Hey, where are you going? I've got an idea, Heck. Don't go away. Father's Day. It isn't bad enough having children. You have to have Father's Day. <laughs> Can you still see it, Heck? Yeah. Practically smiling at me. Well, don't worry about it. We'll get it out all right. What are you going to do? What would you say was the right bait for your fishing tackle? For my... Oh, you mean... First, we'll fish for tackle, then we'll fish for fish. Yeah, that's a good idea. You think you can do it? Of course we can. See now, that's about the biggest hook I have. You got any sinkers? Of course I have sinkers. Stop worrying, Heck. I'll get down there all right. Is that the heaviest line you got? Well, I didn't expect to catch any whales today. <laughs> I know, Jim, but that stuff weighs a ton. Heck, I give you my personal guarantee. If I hook it, I'll land it. Now, let me have a little room, will you? Uh, uh, allow for a little drift into the shore, Jim. I'll put it right on the button. Okay, low bridge. Nice casting, huh? What'd you have to put away out there for? So I can drag it across. Now, leave me alone, Heck. I know what I'm doing. Well, good morning, men. Having any luck? Sure, all bad. Can you see it, Heck? I think you're too far to the left. Well, maybe I can pull it over. Doing a little uh, bottom fishing, eh? Look, fella, we're busy right now. We got troubles. Come back some other time, huh? Okay. Uh, just a minute. Come on, Jim. We haven't got all day. Take it easy, Heck. He might be a game warden or something. Uh, you wouldn't happen to be a game warden or anything, would you? Me? Oh, no. I'm not a game warden. Because if you are, we've got our licenses and permits and things like that. <laughs> we don't worry about those things up here. Oh. <laughs> this uh, wouldn't be a private lake, would it? Oh, no, no, no. Not a private lake at all. Ah. <sighs> You know, for a minute, you had me worried. <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. This is a government fish hatchery. Oh, no. <laughs> Poor father. If it isn't one thing, it's another. That long trip all for nothing. Just goes to show it always pays to look before you leap. On that score, when it comes to buying a pound of coffee, it always pays to look for flavor. Yes, you want to be sure you get the most in flavor for every penny you spend. And that's just what you do get in every pound of our Maxwell House coffee. An extra measure of flavor. That wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor no coffee but Maxwell House gives you. We're proud as can be of that famous flavor... It's the big reason why more people buy and enjoy our Maxwell House than any other brand. And today, as always, you can count on it every cup you pour. 
because we'll never compromise on the quality of one single pound. That's why now more than ever, your coffee buy is Maxwell House. Every pound, every cup, you can be sure it's always good to the last drop. Once again, it's breakfast time in the white frame house on Maple Street. But it's a lonely sort of breakfast with none of the children at the table. Just Margaret and Jim, two lonely parents, discussing the disastrous effects of Father's Day. Like this. There's no sense being upset about it, Jim. Dr. Simmons said it was nothing serious. I know, but you'd certainly think Betty'd have enough sense to recognize goldenrod after all these years. She didn't see it, Jim, and she still says it wasn't goldenrod. Well, it was something. She's puffed up like a frog. Well, Bud's the one I'm worried about. He says it itches terribly. There's a giant brain for you. (laughs) Goes to sleep in a patch of poison ivy. (laughs) Wallows in the stuff. How's Kathy? Oh, she'll be all right in a few days. It's just a little cold. (laughs) Jim, I don't understand. How can you laugh at a time like this? (laughs) I don't know, Margaret. The whole thing is hysterical. It was quite a fishing trip. Wasn't it? Hay fever, poison ivy, a cold. (laughs) This family caught everything except fish. The instant coffee with a famous flavor. That's Instant Maxwell House, the happiest combination in coffee. Wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor combined with the convenience and thrift of coffee made instantly in the cup. So easy, no pot, no grounds. So thrifty, saves you real money compared to ordinary coffee. So truly good, pure roaster-fresh flavor. Try Instant Maxwell House, the instant coffee with a famous flavor. Instantly good to the last drop. Bob, I have a duty to perform right now which gives me a great deal of pleasure. We were all quite thrilled when the National Father's Day Committee named you Screen Father of the Year. Well, this is the committee's medal, and they've asked me to present it to you with their blessings and warmest wishes. Thank you very much, Bill, ladies and gentlemen. Naturally, I'm very proud of this honor, but not for myself alone. As the father of four girls, I've spent a lot of time and gnawed a lot of nails in the waiting rooms of various hospitals in Southern California. Now, to prospective fathers who are wearing themselves to a frazzle, pacing endlessly up and down in hospital corridors all over the country, I have a most reassuring message. Fellas, you see... They do give medals to fathers. Thanks again, Bill, and good night. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargy and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James.